Hello, this is project 22021 and we are working on the optimal valve diaphragm and membrane design for use in medical catheters. This project is sponsored by Spectrum Plastics Group. Before we get into more details of our project, we would like to introduce you to our team. Colette Dorr is studying biomedical engineering and is the health and safety engineer. Kelsey Petrillo is studying biomedical engineering and is the information engineer. Sydney Schreiner is studying biomedical engineering and is the requirements engineer. Monty Singh, also studying biomedical engineering, is our team lead. And Max Tucker is studying material science and engineering and is the procurement lead on the project. For reference, here's our design day poster. Throughout this video, we will be presenting more detailed information off of a slideshow we have created, but please feel free to reference it as needed. Moving into the project description, Zeridium Medical Devices at Spectrum Plastics Group in Tucson, Arizona is sponsoring a project with the objective to develop and design a prototype for an optimal model for a diaphragm membrane that can be utilized in a medical catheter system such as a brain shunt. This membrane will account for various properties, including durometer, physical dimensions, and pressure, and should be supported by empirical testing and data analysis. The membrane should allow fluids to flow in one direction and open only when a specific pressure is applied, but also allow fluid of a specific pressure to flow in the opposite direction across the membrane so to clear any potential blockages. Next, we have our background and project need. The current method is to clear the catheter in attempt to eliminate blockages or have a total replacement of the catheter. For our approach, we have designed an ultra-thin diaphragm membrane that can be burst to provide alternate path for fluid drainage to reduce the need for the patient to undergo emergency surgery, thus saving time, money, and even the patient's life. Our product is the optimized diaphragm membrane. The budget is $4,000 for this project and the project duration is nine months. Our approach was to create an ultra thin membrane, 10 thousandths of an inch thick, using a silicone rubber with the hardness of 50 on the shorter scale. The membrane will be implemented in a catheter system and will be located in the membrane housing as shown in the figure on the bottom right, just following the main fluid drainage apparatus. The slit geometries that will be laser cut into the membrane are as followed. Horizontal, cross slit, star slit, X slit, and sawtooth. The deliverables for this project are as followed. We will provide sponsors with a complete SOLIDWORKS model of the membrane testing design. All laser cutting and burst pressure testing data and graphs will be provided. Slit geometries that work best with the specified bursting pressure of 9.1 psi will be shared, and a PPK index of the performance analysis will be provided via MATLAB to show the reproducibility of the membrane. Each design requirement laid out for our project will be verified in one of four ways, testing, analysis, demonstration, or inspection. The verification method will be indicated in the second column with a T, A, D, or I, respectively. The performance requirements for this project are as follow. 4.11 shall burst at a given pressure. 4.12 shall prevent any reflex of liquids across the valve prior to burst. 4.13 shall allow fluid flow through the membrane following the burst. The production requirements for this project are as followed. 4.2.1 made of liquid silicone rubber. 4.2.2 shall be manufactured from silicone of consistent hardness. 4.2.3 reproducible system to PPK standards. Customer constraints are as followed. 4.3.1 shall conform with the ISO 13485 specification. 4.3.2 shall be a final product composed of biocompatible material. 4.3.3 shall be a one-time burst test membrane. And finally, section 4.4 design features. 4.4.1 shall have an intentional slit with specified geometry to act as a weak point where pressure is concentrated. 4.4.2 shall be a single injection molded part. For the burst pressure testing setup, the membranes were then attached to the water pump nozzle. Water was allowed to flow through the membrane to remove any air bubbles before the end was closed off using a clamp. The pressure is slowly increased and the membrane is carefully observed for any leaks or bursts. The final burst pressure is recorded on the digital pressure gauge attached to the burst pressure testing device. Through testing, we determined that the best possible combination was the use of the sawtooth slit geometry with the dot setting at 30% power on a 10 thousandth of an inch membrane. This combination provided a complete burst at a consistent water pressure. The average burst pressure was 17.5 psi. 
While the burst pressure is not as low as the original specifications of 9.1 PSI, we have shown proof of concept and our data indicates that this method of lowering the burst pressure using intentional slit geometries is possible with access to more advanced laser cutting technology. For reference, we determined that a membrane of equivalent thickness without an intentional slit geometry will burst at 24 PSI. The laser cutter we used caused minute differences in the thickness of the slits, resulting in weaker points throughout the cut that would cause small leaks. As a result, the pressure had to be increased past the design specifications to cause a full burst after these initial small leaks. However, while we decided with our sponsors at Ceridium that 9.1 PSI would be an ideal burst pressure, the actual specifications were that the burst pressure fall between 3.2 and 15 PSI, so our final burst pressure for the device is just above the upper range of the target pressure. Here is a graph visually demonstrating the consistency of our burst pressures. As you can see, the trend line is fairly flat with the average burst pressure being 17.5 PSI. In conclusion, we have created and designed an ultra-thin optimal valve diaphragm made of liquid silicone rubber. We have understood the capabilities of the laser cutter and the water pump that verifies the consistency of data produced by both of the equipments. We demonstrated our concept is doable with the more advanced equipment located at the Spectrum Nebraska plant. Finally, this membrane would be one of its kind that would help bypass blockages in medical catheters for critical applications such as a brain shunt. Our main lessons learned from this project include time management is key when the biggest factor is lead times. Teamwork is critical for splitting roles and effectively working together. Some of the skills we learned include laser cutting and burst pressure testing. The software we used includes ImageJ, MATLAB, DynaLite Microscope, and SOLIDWORKS. Finally, it is important to remain in constant communication with your project sponsors and customers to make sure their needs are being met. Finally, we would like to thank everyone at Zeridium Medical Devices, specifically Paul, Jordan, and Alex for their commitment to mentoring our group, allowing us to utilize their facilities and equipment, and for providing us with valuable industry experience. We would also like to thank our mentor, Steve Laramore, for his support, expertise, and guidance throughout this senior capstone project. Thank you.